This video is going to focus upon exothermic and endothermic reactions, bond breaking and bond making, and whether those processes are exothermic or endothermic, and finishing with how to construct energy profile diagrams for exothermic and endothermic reactions. An exothermic reaction is any chemical reaction in which heat energy is given out or released from the reaction system to its surroundings. So as shown in my cartoon here, this reaction system is giving out heat energy through all these arrows to the surrounding area. This will mean that the temperature of the surrounding area, the temperature of the surroundings will increase. At this point, I'm going to try and define the term enthalpy change because it'll be really useful going forwards. An enthalpy change is a measure of the amount of heat energy taken in or given out at constant pressure in a chemical reaction. The reason why we use that term constant pressure is to create uniformity so that anywhere across the globe, when we talk about enthalpy change, we know we're talking about the same value. Therefore, thinking about an exothermic reaction, the enthalpy change or delta H is the symbol used for enthalpy change for an exothermic reaction will always be a negative value because the chemical system is giving out heat energy from the system to the surroundings. Now I'm going to look at the flip side and talk about an endothermic reaction. Endo as a term generally means inside or inwards. So an endothermic reaction is any chemical reaction in which heat energy is taken in or absorbed from the surroundings into the chemical system. So this time my surroundings have heat, heat arrows going into the reaction system and so that that's heat energy moving inwards. The temperature of the surroundings will therefore be decreasing and getting colder. The enthalpy change sign, delta H, for an endothermic reaction will always be a positive value because the reaction system is gaining heat energy from the surroundings and therefore the products will be higher in energy than the reactants were. At this point, I'm gonna talk about bond making versus bond breaking. So imagine I was breaking this cartoon style chemical bond. I would have to put energy in to overcome the strong electrostatic force of attraction holding these two atoms together. So breaking chemical bonds will always require an energy input. On the other hand, forming chemical bonds will actually give out thermal or heat energy. That may seem counterintuitive, but consider this idea. When my two atoms collide, react together successfully and form my chemical bond, my chemical bond is again a strong electrostatic force of attraction holding those atoms together. They're being held together in a more stable, lower energy state than they were in when they were free moving atoms. Therefore, where did that energy go? It must have gone somewhere. It's given out in the form of heat. So bond making will always give out energy in the form of heat. We can summarize this with a handy mnemonic known as Bendomex. And what it means is the following. Bendo, but the first part is called bendo. That means breaking chemical bonds is an endothermic process. Therefore, breaking chemical bonds will always take in thermal energy to do that process. Whereas making chemical bonds is always an exothermic process. Energy will always be given out. Heat energy will always be given out when you form chemical bonds. This brings us neatly onto the idea of energy profile diagrams. So this is a representation of an exothermic energy profile diagram. There are some key aspects to these profile diagrams. Firstly, the axes. The um, x-axis is always the progress of reaction, uh, the, the reaction taking place. And the y-axis is always a measure of relative energy. For all exothermic reactions, the reactant's energy line will always be higher than the product energy line. That's one of the key aspects of an exothermic energy profile diagram. The reactant's energy level must be higher than the product energy level. An arrow is drawn to connect the reactant line to the product line. 
This arrow is known as the enthalpy change. It is a measure of the heat energy being given out by this exothermic reaction. Finally, the curving line which connects the product and reactant line is known as the energy profile line itself. And note that there's this arrow going to the peak of that curve. That is known as the activation energy. It is the minimum energy required which must be input for the reaction to occur. Those are your four key aspects of an energy profile diagram. Reactant line, product line, enthalpy change, and activation energy. And the key thing to remember for an exothermic energy profile diagram is the product line must be a lower energy position than the reactant line. Now, can we explain this diagram in terms of Bender mix? Actually, we can. What this diagram is implying is that less energy is being taken in, breaking chemical bonds within the reactants, than is being given out, forming chemical bond bonds in the products. Therefore, overall, more energy is being given out in the form of heat than is being taken in in the form of heat, making this overall reaction exothermic. So in any situation where less energy is taken in, breaking bonds within the reactants, than is given out, forming bonds within the products, the overall reaction will be exothermic. Looking at the complete opposite is an endothermic energy profile diagram. Now note the key differences. This time, the product energy line is at a higher energy state than the reactant line. So the products exist at a higher energy state than the reactants. Again, I connect the two lines up with a, a, an arrow, which represents the enthalpy change, but this time the enthalpy change is a positive value because this reaction system is taking in heat energy from its surroundings to raise the energy level of the products. Finally, my energy profile itself, very elongated, much more exaggerated than the exothermic diagram, and note the size of the activation energy this time. It is a much longer line. One key mistake to avoid, which students often make, is to accidentally draw your activation energy um, arrow from the products. Always ensure your activation energy line starts from the reactant line, because it's the minimum energy required for the reaction to occur, if you're starting from the product line, the reaction has already happened. Can we explain this diagram in terms of Bender Mex? Hopefully we can, because this time, much more energy is being taken in, breaking bonds within the reactants, than is being given out, making bonds within the products. Therefore, overall, more energy is being taken in, in the form of heat, than is being given out. This overall process will be endothermic. I hope this video helps you guys to understand the two terms and also the key aspects of drawing energy profile diagrams correctly.